Hello friends, welcome to our YouTube channel and today's video I am gonna cover the glycolysis. Guys, just stay in there for 5 minutes and I assured that you wouldn't find a more simplified version. So let's start with glycolysis. So guys, to start with, after a high carbohydrate diet, we have glucose all around over there in our body, in the blood and it literally enters every cell of the body. In the cells, it sees an enzyme which is called as hexokinase. So guys, as the name suggests, hexokinase meaning a kinase enzyme which phosphorylates a hexose sugar. So this hexokinase acts on the glucose and it converts the glucose into its phosphorylated product that is the glucose 6-phosphate. And in this phosphorylation, it takes the phosphate group from ATP and during that ATP is converted into ADP. This hexokinase enzyme is present in all the cells of the body. While in the liver, we have a specific enzyme which is called as the glucokinase enzyme and I will discuss the regulation of hexokinase and glucokinase in the later part of the video. After the glucose 6-phosphate is formed, it sees a very low yield enzyme. You don't have to remember the name actually, but it converts the glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. After fructose 6-phosphate is formed, here comes the most important enzyme of the glycolysis that is the phosphofructokinase 1 which is written as PFK1 and it converts the fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-biphosphate and in this process ATP is converted into ADP. So up to the fructose 1,6-biphosphate we have the consumption of two ATP molecules. After the fructose 1,6-biphosphate is formed it sees a very low yield enzyme you don't have to remember the name again and it converts the fructose 1,6-biphosphate into two molecules or two products. One is the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and one is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now this dihydroxyacetone phosphate get convert, gets converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So we have the formation of two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Uh, now this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate sees an enzyme which converts it into glyceraldehyde 1, 3 by phosphate. This is the only step in the glycolysis in which there is an oxidation reaction. And since it is an oxidation reaction, the glucose 3-phosphate is being oxidized. So, the electrons which come after the oxidation, they are taken up by a molecule which is called as NAD+, and it is converted into NADH. So, in this process, we have the formation of NADH molecule. Uh, from there onwards, the glyceraldehyde 1,3-biphosphate uh, is a high-energy compound, and it gets converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now since a high energy compound is being converted into low energy compound, therefore the energy is being released and this energy is utilized to phosphorylate a molecule of ADP and convert it into ATP. So please, please, please remember, this is an example of substrate level phosphorylation. This uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted into glyceraldehyde 2-phosphate, enzyme you don't need to remember. And now this glyceraldehyde 2 phosphate is converted into a molecule called as phosphoenol pyruvate. Again, phosphoenol pyruvate is a very high energy compound. This phosphoenol pyruvate is acted upon by an enzyme called as pyruvate kinase and it converts the phosphoenol pyruvate into pyruvate, releasing the energy. And this energy is again utilized by the ADP for its phosphorylation and later on conversion into ATP molecule. So again, we have the second example of substrate level phosphorylate. So uh, uh, in the end of the glycolytic pathway, we have the production of two molecules of pyruvate. Uh, and the enzyme pyruvate kinase is again an important enzyme. I will be discussing the pathophysiology of its efficiency. Uh, but at the moment, just focus your mind on the pyruvate. Now this pyruvate which is formed, there are two pathways in which it can enter and it all depends on the presence of oxygen. If the oxygen is present and the cells have mitochondria, then the pyruvate enters into the mitochondria where it sees an enzyme called as pyruvate dehydrogenase. Guys, this is a very important enzyme. This pyruvate dehydrogenase converts the pyruvate into acetyl coenzyme A and releases the carbon dioxide molecule. Now this Acetyl coenzyme A, it gets uh, uh, converted or it gets taken up in the TCA cycle or the citric acid cycle or it may be used for the production of fatty acid depending upon the need of the cell. In the absence of oxygen, 
we have the conversion of pyruvate into lactate via an enzyme called as lactate dehydrogenase. Okay, from now we uh, I I will be quickly dealing with the regulation of the glycolytic pathway. This is very very important, guys. I discussed the enzyme glucokinase or hexokinase. See, hexokinase is virtually present in every cell of the body, and it is regulated by its product that is feedback regulation. Whenever the amount of glucose six phosphate increases, it shuts off the hexokinase enzyme. So, as the glycolysis proceeds, the hexokinase enzyme is virtually shut down or shut off in every cell of the body. While in the liver, we have a specific enzyme which is called as the glucokinase enzyme. This glucokinase enzyme is hormonally regulated. This enzyme, glucokinase, is upregulated by insulin and it is not affected by the glucose 6-phosphate. The second enzyme about the regulation of which we have to discuss is the phosphoreptokinase enzyme. This phosphoreptokinase 1 is very very important enzyme. But before discussing its regulation, we have to discuss another thing. The fructose 6-phosphate is acted upon by another enzyme and specifically in the liver which is called as phosphoreptokinase 2 and it converts the fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 2,6-biphosphate. This thing happens only in the liver. The fructose 2,6-biphosphate is a potent regulator or a activator of the enzyme phosphoreptokinase 1. So, uh, the phosphoreptokinase 1 is upregulated by fructose 2,6-biphosphate and also there is a molecule which is called as AMP. As far as, as its inhibition is concerned, it is inhibited by ATP and citrate. So this is the regulation of phosphoreptokinase 1. The last enzyme about which we have to discuss is the pyruvate kinase. That is the pathophysiology of pyruvate kinase deficiency is that if there is a pyruvate kinase deficiency, then we have the decrease in the glycolytic pathway. So we have the decrease in the production of ATP as a result of which in the RBCs, where the glycolysis is the sole pathway, the ATP will not be produced as a result of which the membrane stability will not be maintained and there will be degradation of the membrane resulting in hemolytic anemia. So pyruvate kinase deficiency results in hemolytic anemia. Guys, this is all about the glycolysis. I hope you like my video. Please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you. I am coming with new videos.